Hi, I'm Rob with Precision Zone, and I'm going to be going over a few troubleshooting steps or static checking, if you will, on some of these AC servo drives. Now, part of troubleshooting is performing a static check on your drive, and the first thing that we're going to do is make sure we turn off the machine and let the drive sit for some time so the DC bus discharges. Now, you could leave your drive installed in the machine if you would like. You don't really have to pull it out, but you do have to remove the inputs and the outputs before you perform a static check or you're going to get a, a wacky reading. One of the first checks that you can perform is just a visual check. Now, on this little drive right here, the first thing that we did notice when we received it are these ground screws are not green anymore. They're black. Well, that was a pretty good indication that something went very wrong inside of this drive and that's what we verified when we static checked it. So a visual inspection of all the components on the boards, all the capacitors, all the resistors, all the LEDs, making sure that nothing looks burnt or broken. Um, smell is also a great indication. When this thing first came in, it did not smell very well. So after the visual check has been performed and the drive has been sitting for some time, you're going to want to access the DC bus and check to see if it's discharged. Now on some manufacturers, they make the DC bus very accessible and on some manufacturers, they don't make it very accessible at all. And also as time has gone on, drives and inverters have gotten more sophisticated and checking them has become the same, but it's become a lot easier because of the way that drives are now designed. As you can see here on this Mitsubishi drive and this Akuma drive, the only way that you can access the DC bus is going directly to the DC bus capacitors. And we don't really recommend getting in there unless you really know what you're doing with the set of probes on these two drives right here, this Yaskawa and this Fanuc, they actually make the DC bus extremely easy to get at, especially on this newer Fanuc that has the inverter converter design. On this Yaskawa, they put the DC bus right here on the terminals, also making it very convenient. So before we go disconnecting the wires going to our DC bus, we're gonna go ahead and check to make sure that the DC bus has been discharged. So we're going to go ahead and take a quality meter, just like this Hayoki DT4252 meter. We're going to set it to the DC setting, and then we're going to take the positive side of the probe and place it on the positive side of the DC bus and the negative probe on the negative DC bus and take a reading. And we're not showing any voltage, which is great. Now, I wouldn't proceed any farther. I would just go ahead and give it some more time before you proceed. Now, it's safe to go ahead and disconnect the DC bus, and it's safe to disconnect the UVW or the RST or the L1, L2, L3. Now, once you've gone ahead and disconnected them, you're going to want to make sure that all of the terminals are screwed down tight. Otherwise, it may give you some goofy readings. So the first test that we're going to perform is a phase to ground test. And we'll go ahead and place the multimeter in the resistance function. We're going to take the negative side of our probe and find a good ground. And then we're going to take the positive side of our probe and go between R, S, and T and U, V, and W and make sure that there's no resistance. And we'll go ahead and check this Yaskawa at the same time. Well, that's great. Now the inputs or outputs are shorted to ground. So we'll go ahead and move into our next test. We're going to go ahead and turn the digital multimeter to the diode setting. And then we're going to be performing a check on the inputs using the negative probe and placing it on the positive side of the DC bus and going between R, S, and T and U, V, and W. So negative probe, positive side of the DC bus, 
375. Well, that's great. They all check good on this one. Let's check out the other one. 0 0.5, 0.5, 0 0.5. Same would go for the rest of them. Now what we're gonna do is switch our probes and take the positive lead and place it on the negative side of the DC bus and then do the check with the negative lead on all of the inputs and outputs. Well, that's great that these two are checking fine. Now, ideally, you would like the reading between anywhere between 0.3 and 0.7. That's where the majority of the servo drives are going to be. Now, they can be outside of that, but that just kind of depends on your specific drive. And one of the most important things is that they're balanced across all three phases. Now, between R, S, and T, and U, V, and W, between those two, there could be a little bit difference, and that would be okay. But between R, S, and T, they really need to be balanced as the same thing between U, V, and W. If you've gone ahead and performed these tests and everything checks good and you're still having alarm problems, go ahead and reach us at precisionzone.com where we can provide you with some more help. I hope this video was helpful, and thanks for watching.